Hmm. I was just reading this news about this event that has just happened. Very interesting. Very clever. Very excited. However, I'm not so sure if this is true, false, or fake. This is the hacker's corner. Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Christian Servin. I'm an associate professor here at El Paso Community College. I teach courses in computer science, cybersecurity, other intelligent computing courses. And this is the Hacker's Corner. Welcome back. I would like to thank everybody who has been very active in the social media, in the YouTube channel for EPCC TV. I want to thank all your comments, all your suggestions for the next series that we are actually dealing right now. We're actually in production and, and generating a couple of the scripts for the next topics that we're actually preparing for you. Thank you so much for your emails as well, for your follows and also the likes that you have been sharing with your friends, with your colleagues, and of course with your family. As you remember, we are running this series of artificial intelligence, a big big event that is happening right now in, in, in different sources is from the from computer, from the internet, from your mobile device. There's been a lot of news nowadays relating with this technology, with this new emerging computing technology that we call it AI. Uh, remember that this series we're trying to uh, provide different perspectives more than just tell you this is AI. Remember that AI is not new. AI has been for many, many decades in humanity, but it turns out that now because of the power of the computers and because of the speed of the computers and all these algorithms has emerged in different shape. And that's something that we've been discussing for the past episodes with a couple of our colleagues, with a couple of the, the episodes that we create for, to inform the community that there's always trade-offs about when a new technology arrives to humanity and we're trying to incorporate different ideas, algorithms, and of course, different sources. Today we have a, a, a specific topic that we would like to talk about, of course related with AI, but this relates more with machine learning and something called deep learning, which is a subset of, of machine learning. Particularly because now we're seeing more and more events that uh, catch our attention in the news about what we call deep fakes. So we, uh, we want to talk about deep artificial fake in, uh, 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 intelligence. So that's a play, we play with those words uh, very often. Uh, some of our colleagues, because you can have artificial intelligence, but also you have deep learning, but also you have deep fake, but also artificial fake, fake intelligence. You can combine them as you want, because that is actually uh, a summary of what is happening right now in technology. Now, if, if we will talk about, uh, we always discuss about the importance of data, like how we provide data through different sources. It can be from your social media, it can be from the data that you provide from your internet provider, maybe from all your records that you've been generating for the past decade. So data, data, and more data. So it is very important that we recognize the importance of storing data. Remember that data eventually turns out into information. Information, when you put data together with an algorithm, it becomes information. And information is very powerful. So it's always important to see the future because after it's some information, the next iteration or the next transformation is knowledge. And we want to have a good knowledge about uh, the decisions that we make especially because of nowadays that we're dealing with a lot of data, a lot of information, and some of that information may not be true. And we'll talk about that today in this uh, episode about how it's important to, to qualify, to question what is behind that newsletter article or that show or that, that new post that you receive on your social media. We also want to understand there's some features that they're not harmful, but also at the same time, if you abuse of these features of that mobile app that you have, it can turn out to be a little bit harmful, a little bit uh, through the negative perspective. So we'll talk about a little bit that today. Also, we'll talk about what is the influence of social media. I know all of you love social media. Some of us, we don't like it too much. Some of us, okay, fine. 
it's already there. We have to use it like some of our colleagues here in the studio that they say, you know what, I, I, I'm extremely happy with the social media. But what are the responsibilities behind a social media? Someone who is actually playing without social media, posting in some specific moment of time, and then what happens eventually when someone reads that post and what are the decisions? So we need to be careful with how we use that responsibly. We'll talk about, of course, artificial intelligence uh, as the main umbrella that entails all these different uh, technologies, including machine learning, including uh, deep learning, and of course, the now so-called deep fake. And of course, some responsibilities that are entails behind that thing. Um, if you remember, I mean, there's many different artificial intelligence uh, apps nowadays. As a matter of fact, uh, we will talk about open, open AI and chat GPT, but for example, what you see right here is one of those AI image enlarger, right? So there's different features about how you can use a regular picture and then you can actually transform it using these high-tech algorithms. Some of these applications require you to post your information. Some of them, they're not free. Some of them available for you. But for example, we run an experiment in some of these images. I took this picture many years ago when we have barely digital cameras. So I put this image into that app, as simple as that. I just drag and drop that image and just put here, transform. The results, they were interesting. If you can notice, the left-hand side here is a picture that I took more than 15 years ago outside of the installations of facilities on Microsoft. But to the right-hand side, you can see how crisp this image has turned out, which is very, very impressive. I was talking to Carol and Marco, the producers from EPCC TV before. He's like, how can you recognize if something is fake or not? And that's a very good question because nowadays, most of those pictures that you see in your social media or you see in any post are super crispy. The resolution is super high, beautiful pictures. The lighting is perfect. And, uh, and you say, wow, this, this is amazing. I mean, great camera, great cell phone. And yes, there are some cell phones nowadays that are super powerful. They have three or four, maybe five cameras embedded or different algorithms in order to make it very nicely, super nice. So sometimes the pictures, I was telling Marco, a uh, uh, producer here is like, some of those pictures even look better than reality. And why? Why is this happening? Well, social media has to do a lot with this influence. And we basically, we notice all the time because for every image that you have, you can put some filters. You take a picture and you have this ability to go to the left, to the right, and then put some enhancements. And that gives you a, a nice picture, nice video, but also it gives this false impression. I mean, I don't have to tell you about social media because most of you are aware about this social media that is happening. Nowadays, there's, one, there's more popular social media than other ones. Some of them that are more controversial, like for example, TikTok. TikTok is probably the, the youngest social media out there, but it's, it's, it's been super popular because you can create videos immediately where you can just record, you can put different music, you can embed different effects, as you can see right here in the screen. TikTok it has become very popular. Now, with this popularity also comes responsibilities. As a matter of fact, and you can watch or you can read reliable news. Uh, there is political influence. There's also um, uh, parents who are actually concerned about what's the mental health of their children, especially because they have this illusion about what is happening in reality. It's very distortionary. It doesn't really reflect reality. And that is why influencers, they're called influencers or followers, right? So these influencers, they have new new techniques and new actually new content and people believe that is their their real life and or fantasy and you cannot distinguish between both of them but this is not new as a matter of fact uh, the at the very beginning um, a couple of years ago as a matter of fact almost a decade social media was just learning about us it was learning about what you like, what you don't like. As a matter of fact, if you remember, we record this session when we were talking about the responsibilities of social media and how the actual likes, the emojis, the actual reactions that we have with the postings have bring us to different decisions. 
the responsibilities of social media nowadays are incredible. So people start to learn based on our reactions. People start to re react based on our reactions. Interestingly speaking, people start to separate for each other based on our postings. So this aspect of social media is being a little bit interesting. But um, if you think about it, who doesn't like music, right? And if you don't like music, you probably like Marco here, he likes podcasts. And podcasts are also, instead of these platforms, for example, Spotify, Pandora, uh, Apple Music, uh, SoundCloud, there's many of them. But interestingly speaking, when we were talking about uh, music, people will say, I would like to hear more similar music like what I just learned, right? So you probably, you're very fan of the Beatles, for example, and you would like to continue listening to similar music. So these apps generate a station for you based on your interest. Now, how do they know? And sometimes they're very, very accurate. I, I personally, I like some of the, the radio stations that they suggest based on my preferences. Why? How did this come up with? Well, they've been collecting hours, actually, as a matter of fact, years of they listen to the music that I like. They actually, they notice how many times I listen to that song, which part of the song I keep repeating. Maybe there's certain specific uh, lyrics that I like. So there, there's some algorithms that are, they intersect to each other. It's like, you know what, if you like this song, most likely you're gonna like this one. And what happens when we're open available for everybody, like the internet? Well, they, these applications that you see right here, they start to relate or exchanging notes with other users. And that's why you refine the music that you like. Now, that probably is true with music, but it's also true with social media. Also, it's new with the newsletters that you read, those um, special reports that you read on social media, if you put some interest on that, they recognize what are your interests. And we already talked about that in many, many, many times. But why is the music so important nowadays? Well, you probably read in the news or watching a video about this controversy that is happening, about this AI-generated song using Drake and the weekend vocals, and then it went viral. So what happened? So this is very interesting perspective because probably you have experienced other AI tools when you just put a picture of your dog and then generate very similar Photoshop image of that. Now, what happened when you put certain songs there and then you generate new music? And it's not as simple that you just, that you have a, a box there, you put all the songs that you like and you shake it and then all of a sudden comes a new thing. So there's algorithms, there's programming behind the scenes. But people who are actually, what happened, let me just explain real quick. There was a song called Heart of My Sleeve, right? So. It generate, uh, there was an, an artist called Ghost Rider. I think uh, there was something else on that, but it went viral because in TikTok with over 230,000 plays, on YouTube, more than 625,000 plays on Spotify. So this was not available. People started, of course, if you're a fan of this artist, you want to hear this song, you want to listen it. So they went through this big uh, platforms like Apple Music, Spotify, um, Deezer and, and, and Tidal, so it was promoted through TikTok. And in seconds, people started to like this, started to get very popular, and then all they received this noise, like, you know what, this is copyright infringement. The author of this claimed to have worked with major music labels, but it was never get paid that well. So this individual learned uh, several techniques about how to do mix, how to do sound engineering, and decide to do an experiment. And that's how they start to combine certain elements from different songs, the vocals, and then generate this well-known song. Of course, the song was removed almost immediately, but people caught the attention. They contact this artist, it's like, I got no idea what happened. I know it's popular, but we have nothing to do with that. So, okay, fine, it was entertaining. It was interesting to entertain that idea about this favorite artist, but this gives you an example how powerful these tools have become. And you don't really need to be in a studio, in a professional studio to generate that thing. You just need a computer and probably some interest about how to do or how to use these AI mechanisms in order to generate that thing. Very interesting. So that will take us to the machine learning aspect. So I like 
this image that I found, uh, by the way, in Wikipedia, right? <laughs> so don't trust this source. But actually, this is part of the source of a book, a well-known book, as you can see right here. How deep learning is a subset of machine learning and how machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. As, as you probably remember, I mentioned that AI is the big umbrella. So that's where mimics the intelligence or behavior patterns from humans of other uh, living entity. So machine learning is a subset that lives in AI. And that says a technique where the computer can learn from the data without using complex set different rules. This approach is mainly based in training models from data sets. So this machine learning, as a matter of fact, if you remember, check this out. In this talk, we discuss about what is the important on basically machine learning and what are their responsibilities and how those facts that we've been locating for many, many, many years can be used in order to make these patterns. Professor Vladi Karenovich gave us a very nice explanation about this specific items. We also discuss what are the consequences about machine learning. Now that we have machine learning, which basically create these patterns and learn from the data that we generate, now we have deep learning. We have different perspectives about reality. They use machine learning in order to make that deep learning so we can predict. This, this technology, this engineering can predict what's the next step. So deep learning is this process, as you can see right now. It's a technique to perform machine learning inspired in our brain's own network and of neurons. So, so this is what is right now cooking in the scientific and engineering community and also how it infuses in technology. Now, let me tell you about deep fake. So deep fake is using probably of deep learning because they basically take the data and do those patterns. But also at the same time, you can actually manipulate based on the senses. What you see right here is fake. Uh, this is a great blog that I found the cybersecurity hub. But this picture was published as a fake image, was generated by an artificial intelligence. You probably know who is individual, right? Maurice Johnson. As you can see here, it says in the caption, these photos might be shocking, but it doesn't exist. It was made in a few seconds using ChatGPT AI, and it's 100% fake. When this happened by using ChatGPT, um, some of people say like, well, let's start to experiment. And, and a lot of you probably, I don't have to tell you this because you can go to the internet, you can find many of those fake images. And again, let me just reiterate, these are 100% fake images that you can see here. However, look the crisp, look the resolution, look the quality of these images. And there's also videos. So anyone who probably, we go, a couple of years behind or a couple of years in the past and we show this picture, it's like, oh, this is definitely real. I cannot believe that this is happening. And I was having this conversation with my producers just before, before this, this show. It's like, how can we know if this is fake or can we know if this is not fake, is if it's real? And I know it sounds uh, a little bit like Bohemian Rhapsody, but what is reality, what is, fantasy is sometimes is hard to tell nowadays. Back in the day, uh, these newsletters before they publish or uh, uh, a show that you see in open, open TV, they have to, uh, to fact checks, right? Um, uh, what's that now? Okay, so they tell me that they always fact check. Well, Yes, you're right, Marco. Uh, Marco told me, it's like, we always have to fact check everything. And that is true. That's actually how it should be. As a matter of fact, now you have to double check. So double fact checks. As a matter of fact, now with the, this whole thing, with deep fake, is not only that. We also have to do triple checks. But how can you know, right? How can you distinguish between a filter that you just did using Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok versus something that is being generated by the AI? There's AI in everything nowadays, but at the same time, how can you know? So there is methods to do it, of course, and this is the responsibilities that all of us, we should take care into consideration. Not everything that you read or you see in the social media or in these letters is true. So you need to be very careful how you disseminate that pieces of information. If you notice 
something that is shocking, that caught your attention, triple check. Go to an art website, go to their, if you like art, it's like what happened. Go to their website, see if there was a, a release of that song. If you don't see anything in their website, their official website, most likely it was not true. Triple check also if, if that is true. Who sent you that image? So go to the resources. Maybe someone already re-forwarded that to you, but without knowing. So there's responsibilities, and those are the, the responsibilities that we, as a users, we need to pay attention. Do not disseminate fake information, because that can be harmful. That creates chaos. That also creates uncertainty. And that creates a speculation. And who is responsible of this at the end of the day? So if we don't pay attention on this, ethical responsibilities, chaos can come as a consequence of that. And we need to pay attention. Carol was asking me, so how do we know? There is metadata in everything that you take. For example, if you take a picture, if you go through the, through the sources, and you may or may not know, it's called metadata. The metadata is that level of granularity where all the information, all the data that was taken with that picture takes place. Location, GPS location, date and time, who took it, ownership. There's a list right here that you can see about metadata that can happen. Now, who knows this? You can figure out that. You just need to play with the settings, or there's websites, legit websites, that you can use and extract that information for you. But you can have the power to recognize this. When you receive a picture, let's see if that is legit. So I know what you're thinking, Professor, how about if I change that metadata? You can. That can, be, uh, that can be manipulated as well. But most of that data cannot. And you can see when someone uh, makes some alteration of that metadata because you will see it's just fake. It's just random information that has no sense. It's completely incoherent. So very interesting times that we're living right now in terms of uh, this manipulation of information. Why people do that thing? The same reason people were doing for many, many years, for, for decades. We're only using right now um, AI as an excuse, but in reality, there's been always some kind of manipulation of information. You just need to pay attention on that uh, for all reasons. It's not necessarily for political inclination, music relation operations, or inclination. Now, let me go back about the open AI, because now people might think, like, what's happening with open AI? That image, that fake image that you saw, it was generated by ChatGPT. So what is happening with ChatGPT and all these open AI products? So I don't know if you noticed, but a couple of weeks ago or months, I don't know when you're watching this show, there was a bug. Okay, fine. ChatGPT uh, recognized there was a temporary exposes of the history of the users who were using. There was all of the news. Basically, they would find out a, a, a bug. We call it bugs when there's an error or there is some kind of information leakage, or when their software is not working correctly, we call it bugs. So that bug basically make us think about, wait, 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 where's the privacy? Where's the considerations about these aspects? So if you Google <laughs> or you search engine with your favorite search engine platform, you can see there was a lot of news about this. So there was uh, information about, even there was a competition to requesting hackers to go and, and try to find more bugs. It was prices up to $20,000 to find those bugs. See how interesting that is, right? So they, they give bounties for those uh, hackers. By the way, this thing about hackers, I, I promise all of you that I was not going to use the word hackers, even that is the hacker's corner, because the word hackers has this responsibility, ethical responsibilities. And we're not doing any kind of ethic, um, unethical hacking here. As a matter of fact, we I have said this many, many times. In my classes, I train the future hackers, the ethical hackers. Now, these ethical hackers, this is what they're doing. They actually promote, you know what, if you find an error, if you find a bug, if you find a vulnerability about this item, please let us know and we'll compensate that thing. This is not news. As a matter of fact, what we have seen in the past is uh, the government also hires these people who would like to explore more areas and recognize those, software engineers, cybersecurity, computer science.
So we have those programs, by the way, here at EPCC. So in case you're interested to, to learn more about these things, uh, register in EPCC. There, we have a great inventory of courses, as a matter of fact, including cybersecurity, computer science, some of them that we infuse them together. And we're working in very good programs and educational programs for you and for your interest. So um, it's an interesting conversation, and we'll, as I promised, we'll continue this conversation with a couple of our colleagues who come here and explain us. So here we can see all these inventories you can see here in the screen of all the shows that we have prepared for you. They're very informative. And again, thank you so much for your interest and your feedback that you've been providing through all these weeks, through all the trajectory of the show. I received very good comments and I would like to continue. Now, if there's something that, uh, was that? Oh, you don't like it? So why you don't like it? If you don't like it, that's fine. Just tell us why we don't like it here in this information. And then we'll, we'll tell you what's, oh, you like it. So you need to clear up more. Okay, you like it or not? So if you like it or if you don't like it, regardless, send us an email or send us a comment into this information and I'll be happy to uh, respond to you or, or also incorporate your feedback. If there's a topic that you would like us to explore even further, tell us and I'll, be make, sure, I'll make sure we put it here in the Hacker's Corner. My name is Christian Servin. I'm thrilled to see you in the Hacker's Corner. I'll see you next time. I hope everybody's doing well, safely, and of course, in a healthy shapes. Um, happy coding, everybody.